Hi there, we're back on the Weekender on CNBC TV 18 and this time with a very, very special guest. People talk about the IQs and EQs, but the thing you have to miss and the thing most people miss is the SQ, which is the spiritual quotient. So to fill that in and enrich our lives, we have with us Gaur Gopal Das. joining in thank you very much mangalam for having me over aap haath dekhte ho kya kai log mujhe yahan par yahi poochte hain ki aap haath dekhte hain ki aur samajhte hain ki main pandit ji hu jo bhavishya dekhunga that's exactly the myth people come and tell me about this pandit ji aap haath dekhenge kya i start talking to them in my british accent in english you understand what i mean right and when i say that uh, they are a little shocked to speaking in english and then of course uh, i tell them that uh, i'm a lifestyle engineer not a pandit ji <laughs> so now you see there's no mean feat here this is what you're going to get let's get down to the business part of it then you're an engineer you worked at hp hewlett packard that is what made you make this switch i, I think 22 years ago or something yes i think uh, we are all here wanting to make a difference in the lives of people it's easy to make a buck hmm. very hard to make a difference so i felt that as an electrical engineer working with hewlett packard i would definitely be able to make some difference but there were millions making a difference in that way i felt i needed to make a difference in a different way make make a difference in people's lives therefore in london when somebody asked me uh, this lady british lady asked me you were an engineer why did you quit your profession i said to her i didn't quit my profession i upgraded my profession from a electrical engineer to a lifestyle engineer so i don't fix machines any longer i fix the people who fix the machines <laughs> that's pretty cool so what kind of problems do people have right now and what are the biggest problems that they have to fix i think people who haven't made it there their problem is how do i get there people who are in the journey reaching there their problem is how to stay determined and focused to reach there and people who have reached there their problem is how do we find a purpose because they've seen it all done it all and they're saying what's next but all through there's one common problem that everybody has pressure and the stress to perform those who want to get up there the stress to reach those who are there the stress to maintain so everybody's going through pressures in life so i'm sure you're fixing a lot of people's lives but i'm uh, before that you had to fix your own life yes. to be able to upgrade to uh, upgrade your os sure. so to say Sure. Uh, what were the challenges for you? The challenges before you. What did you do to be who you are right now? Yeah, I think uh, if you if you are on an airline and you're on a flight, the cabin crew will come and announce that if there be a lack of oxygen supply in the cabin, masks will come from the panel above your head, <laughs> secure them normally and breathe normally, and make sure your mask is in place before you assist and help others. Exactly. So you truly cannot help others unless you are yourself in place. And when we talk about putting your life in place, like my personal life in place, I feel there is a great need to give that priority to fix your life. So yeah, there were challenges moving from being a HP engineer to a lifestyle engineer, moving from being a pampered son to a monk, moving from living in comfort to living in meager facilities in the ashram in the monastery. there were challenges but these were all external challenges mm -hmm. the internal challenges were uh, uh, am i missing out you out there if, if i would if i out there you would probably be really elevated to a very high position in the industry so initially when i just came in the challenge was am i missing out and that challenge was taken care of by seeing the kind kind of lives that were being impacted by what i was doing the satisfaction i felt in trying to bring a difference and making that impact was able to kind of deal with that challenge of feeling did i miss out on something i don't think i missed out on anything at any point because seeing people's life change is what brave brought me that great joy you were also a pampered son and before you became famous via social media reached out to much more people became the so to say cool person there would have been a lot of challenges coming in from the family side a lot of challenges lifestyle related challenges your friends i'm sure you would have had friends they would have upgraded in their life so how did you manage that i think on the family front at the end of the day uh, when you're wanting to do something uh, out of the box there's always going to be opposition mm. from a society where parents want you to subscribe to a certain things a, a settled job 
a settled life in terms of family and you're thinking completely out of the box as soon as you want to do something out of the box you're going to have to face challenges from the right. family side uh, after a while however when my family saw where i was reaching how i was impacting people's lives how how i was really able to make a difference in the world they accepted it very well and i feel in terms of coping up with the challenges of how my friends have moved on in the industry i think it's a question of self discovery i hate i hate being a part of a mold that the world created for me <laughs> i don't want to subscribe to the mold that the world creates for you i don't want to live a life uh, in a paradigm that the world has created for me i want to discover my own mold i want to have a paradigm that i have invented you know only when you discover yourself only when you live a life for what you are created is when you feel happy satisfied not just happy and satisfied you're super effective even in the corporate world today loads of people are just living a life which they're not created for because it pays the box mm -hmm. and why do they need the box to pay the taxes to pay the bills bills to pay the mortgages but they're not living a life of what they are created for so it's basically kind of you know fitting in mm -hmm. just because it pays you but i decided i don't want to fit in so when i saw others moving on my friends my colleagues moving on high up i really did not feel insecure at all because i didn't want to fit in <laughs> to be someone else i wanted to find myself discover myself because as soon as you are successful in your self discovery man you are effective and completely satisfied for a regular professional working professional someone at my stage as well what are the kind of stresses that you see and what would your advice to all of them be i think in the world out there today people have a wrong idea of success people think success means achievement and people think success means having all what the world is promoting to you so the more you have the more successful you are and the more happier you are that's a completely wrong idea of success that people have now when you're wanting to achieve and you're wanting to get the best and you're wanting to get there all the time obviously you have to work hard loads of people are putting in 14 16 18 hours of work not prioritizing their health not prioritizing their hobbies not prioritizing their family not pri prioritizing their spirituality not prioritizing their unwinding themselves But how much do you prioritize there's so many things seeking your attention is, is there a risk of people spreading themselves too thin and how do you figure that out how do you how do you fix I, that i don't think so it's a question of spreading yourself out i think it's a question of finding the right balance irritability and lack of satisfaction is 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 a uh, is an outcome of a life out of balance you know a life out of balance now it's like it's like when you are, uh, an artist is wanting to make a painting or a pencil sketch and if he's sharpening the pencil someone comes and says hey man you're wasting your time sharpening the pencil but unless you sharpen the pencil whatever you do is going to be extremely blunt so if you even want to be effective at work and achieve it's better that you be internally focused if you're not focused and if you're not internally and mentally stable your output at the workplace is low as well i'm saying that if you prioritize those things that mean to you you work on yourself you work on your internal self the consequence of that would be will be super productive in less number of hours people are taking much longer to do something that they could have done in much shorter amount of time because they're distracted they're not focused they're not together internally what you're saying is very simple but it's not easy absolutely so let's cut to the chase sure give it all to our viewers a few practical solutions to continue to focus on oneself and not be distracted by the noise that there are some Correct. practical solutions Correct. number 1 start taking an inventory regularly okay don't just go with the flow if you're not even paying attention to if you're not even cognizant if you're not even identifying those areas you're not going to work on them so first identify that i need to work on this understand that this is a priority step 2 is regularly take time out if you don't take a break you're simply leading to a breakdown a break is going to help you get to a breakthrough but a lack of break is going to get you to a breakdown If you have ever read the book The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, it's a guy who's been working, achieving, putting his 200% and gets a cardiac arrest at a young age in the courtroom. What is it all about? You've achieved everything and you've been a massive failure because you couldn't work on your life. So two is take a break. Now you might say, "Man, I'm really busy. How am I going to take a break?" 
which basically means you've not got it right. If you can't take a break, you're leading to a breakdown. Prioritize that break so you can achieve a breakthrough. Yeah. I know breaks are not easy. Even me, my life is 150 to 200, sometimes 250 flights a year. Exactly. That's how much I travel. How do you take a break? I've learned the art of unwinding on the go. How do you do that? You have to do it on the go. Prioritize it. I listen to your favorite music. Read your favorite book. Eat your favorite food. You know, meditate while or you're on the go. Sit there. Unwind yourself. Learn the art of cutting off from the surroundings while you're on. You're sitting in the car driving back home. You're sitting on a 17 hours flight to New York. You know, what are you going to do all those 17 hours? Learn the art of cutting off from the surroundings and going within. I do that. So you spoke about, you know, the monk who sold his Ferrari. You seem to be a guy who's got it all sorted. You don't seem like a person who's cut out of a rational sadhu mold. Mm -hmm. You chose to take this profession sure. up. So if I can call it a profession or a vocation, so to say. So what did you analyze in that arena? What would work? What would not work? Sure. And how did you get to where you are? Yeah, I think I believe that the seven greatest I, I would say the seven words which are the greatest enemy of growth and progress in any field, including what I'm doing, A, are, we have always done it this way. Nokia thought we've always done it this way. They are out. You know, Blockbuster thought they've always done it this way. Netflix threw them out. If I as a monk thought that I, we have always done it this way. The monks in the past have always spoken this way. They've always been this way. Well, I would be out as well. My, my not wanting to be out was not because I wanted to be the center. My not wanting to be out was so that I can I'll reach out to people and help make a difference in their lives. So obviously I had to change with times. Obviously I had to change my jargon. <laughs> obviously I had to bring in a punch of uh, a bit of humor in there. Obviously, I would have to uh, speak lines which will resonate with people. Right. The, it's like, um, I hate using the word, but it's like uh, saying old wine in a new bottle. Right. Principles never change. Values never change. Knowledge and wisdom doesn't change. But how you bring it to people, that certainly can change. And I believe that's what's resonated with people. It's not that I'm saying anything new. It's the same wisdom, the same knowledge. Many people are speaking it. But just the way you package it. So Nokia failed in packaging themselves rightly, coming on into digital photography. Right. Blockbuster denied when Netflix, ap Netflix approached them. They're out. And if I think I don't change, I don't keep up with the times, well, I'm outdated. If you're not updated, you're outdated. Whether it's spirituality or the industry out there, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely true. You know, you speak to a lot of the corporates. Spiritual quotient, that is something which is lacking in across the corporate fraternity sure. right now. Could you give us an example of how a uh, spiritual quotient in a corporate company led the company to a lot of success? Yes. I think when we are talking about uh, a spiritual quotient, the word mindfulness is a big thing in the world today. Mm -hmm. I was in uh, San Francisco mm -hmm. and I was invited to speak at Salesforce. Okay. And Mark Benioff, one of the things he's done at Salesforce is he has prioritized mindfulness for every single employee. Every single floor of their headquarters in Salesforce has a mindfulness zone. People can go there, practice mindfulness. In fact, every year they have this conference called Dreamforce in the month of November. About 200,000 American top-notch professionals come for the conference. And in that four to five days conference, the last day is a mindfulness day, where they invite people who can speak to, their, to these professionals so that they can learn the art internally connecting, stabilizing their minds, because even Mark Benioff realized that when people are together, the output is much greater than when they're just distracted and lost. You know, So the paycheck is never an issue. But if you cut corners, the organization never grows. So I think, yes, even in terms of profitability and organizational growth, spirituality does make a difference because it gives a person good character, integrity, a certain values. A person contributes the most. I'd like you to talk about the two things that you know I remember you most for. One was uh, the pencil example yes. that you had spoken of, and the second, why worry? <laughs> that one yeah. I think was that was was, was yeah, quite yeah. famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little about how you went about those two. Yes, yes, yes. 
the pencil, of course, I always uh, love to talk about the pencil. Uh, it's some, something so simple and something so common just lying around you. Did you buy the Apple pencil, by the way? I do have one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> The Tell tech savvy me. monk. The tech savvy <laughs> monk. The monk who did not sell his Ferrari but bought an iPhone. Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> Are you writing a book? Yes, it's, out, it's going to be out in October of 2018, Penguins Publishing. Sure. So tell me about the pencil. And yes, uh, so when we're talking about the pencil, I, I, I believe that you don't need to complicate things in people's heads. The greatest and the deepest uh, lessons come from the simplest things around you. And when I talk about the pencil, I always say that uh, the pencil maker told the pencil that, you know, what is truly important is what lies within you. So yes, externally we have our work, externally we have our personality, but internally, as a person, we have to also develop. So pencil is about finding the balance between the external and the internal. The external is the casing, the internal is the lead, lead that makes an impact. So while we lead a life of valuables externally, we must also prioritize the values internally. While we lead a life of personality externally, we also need to prioritize being a good person internally. While we live a life of charisma externally, we also need to live a life of character internally. So the balance between the external and the internal is the balance of the lead in the pencil and the casing of the pencil. Yeah. What angers you? When I don't do the best of what I'm meant to do. What if uh, the environment doesn't allow or inter intervenes in you doing your best. Yeah, if the environment intervenes in my not being able to do my best, my being angry is not going to sort the situation anyways. Why worry? <laughs> there you have it. Why worry? That's what I wanted. It's beyond my control anyway. <laughs> uh, the, uh, one message you would give to all the stock market investors right now, there's a lot of volatility in the markets on a daily basis, blood pressure is going high, low every time. Sure. I think uh, my message is while you're trying to be successful, also feel successful. Being successful and feeling successful is two different things. Being successful is the numbers. Feeling successful is the ability to handle the volatility in the VUCA world. A lot of the companies that we speak to, you know, they are accused of having dishonest promoters, destroying shareholder value, a lot of corporate misgovernance issues. Sure. Your uh, message to all those who are managing their company in a dishonest manner. Yes. I think when we are talking about dishonesty in the corporate world and corporate governance, I do not see a substitute to good training and awareness. Unless there is good training and awareness and a spiritual practice that transforms people, people are going to cut corners and find a loophole to do what they want to do. See, those are the traits that you know that attract you to the, the, the younger crowd because you are relatable, you are not uh, the person who sits on an ivory tower and sure. preaches all these things. You are living in the world. In fact, I see you wearing yeah, a watch as well. Course. That's pretty cool. Must say. The so sadhus like fruits. Sadhus <laughs> like fruits. <laughs> the blackberry? No. no apples. <laughs> Only apples. Bitten apples. <laughs> Bitten apples. Adam's apples. <laughs> Steve Jobs' apples. <laughs> okay. So, uh, someone who wishes to follow your footsteps and perhaps do something that something similar to what you're doing right now, how do you advise uh, them to go about that? I would say there's no need to become a monk like me. Okay. You can make a difference by being who you are. I believe that they need to understand the right values, they need to understand the right kind of uh, knowledge and wisdom and then present it in a way that people can connect to. So there's no need to become a monk to help make a difference. You can do it the way you are. All right, and before we let you go, one story from your life that summarizes that everything that you want to say to the world. The one story from my life is that anything that you evaluate by face value saying this is bad, could actually turn out to be good. Give me an example. An example is how I came to the world in social media. There was a particular clip on WhatsApp that started circulating. Someone had played mischief, had taken a joke out of context, and it started circulating it. In fact, my inbox, WhatsApp, is filled with the same video, 3.8 megabytes, the day I got it three years back. Mm -hmm. And I was worried, God, what I'm saying could get me in trouble. And I thought, God, this is this is a difficult situation. In fact, I even called a lawyer oh. to see what the repercussions could be because what I had said could bring me in controversy. And it's quite amazing. It was that clip that actually brought me to the world. So what you see as a curse could turn into a blessing. What you see as bad could turn into good. So never, ever evaluate any situation based on its face value. Something you think is good could be absolutely destructive for you 
and something which you think is absolutely bad and destructive could turn out to be something constructive. Something that Didn't Steve Jobs say therefore connect the dots backwards? Yeah. What video was that if I may ask? It was a video which said uh, how much would a teacher in India earn? Average income throughout their savings, yeah. maybe about 50,000 lakh of rupees. How much would a software engineer save that by the end of the maybe a two crores, one and a half crores. How much would a corrupt politician, not a good one, how much would a corrupt politician save by the end of his uh, career? Maybe two, three thousand, four thousand crores. And then how much would a guy wearing these kind of clothes have? Eight thousand crores, twenty thousand crores, thirty thousand crores. And then I said to my audience, choose your career wisely. <laughs> so that, oh God, they were getting me in trouble, you know. <laughs> On that note, we <laughs> shall ask the audience to choose your career wisely. And thank you so much thank for you joining Mangalam. us. Thank you, It was a great pleasure being with you. Adding so much value. Thank you.